is December 28th, day 12 of the Run It Up Challenge. This should be a, be a pretty quick video. We've just got a review last night and go through just a five game slate tonight. Um, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too long. So let's let's dive right in. Last night was, I believe, the lowest score we've ever uh, we've ever put up in this challenge with it, which is a two oh five. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think our short list of players was pretty good. We just missed on the guys that uh, we chose. We should have picked the other guys on the short list. And um, and got a couple of disappointing performances, but you know uh, we we move on to to today really. So it's uh, something that you know not to be too concerned about. Um, we did lose every single thing we were in the eight heads ups and did not cash in the GPP. So I think that's just the second time during the challenge we've done that to lose the the whole ten percent in one day. Um, so yeah, okay, we can, we can grind it back up. The bankroll is at, uh, right around $90. So we'll have $9 in play tonight, but, uh, just quickly looking back, uh, Trey Burke was only 3000. So for him to put up 25 points is over eight times. So that was perfect. I'm, I'm shocked that he was only 32%. Um, I think a lot of times when, when there's a pricing error, people either miss it as we've discussed a couple times, or for some reason think that a hundred percent of the, the players are going to have it. So they fade it, but you know, don't, don't overthink it. Um, in regards to overthinking it, we did not have Derek favors who I just kind of dismissed as uh, a whole lot of hype. I thought everyone would have him highly owned and, uh, we, we should have, he, he put up great numbers. So Derek Favors, big night. Um, Trey Burke, big night against the Sixers, and we only had one of them. Uh, Avery Bradley, by far one of his worst nights in a long time, only nine fantasy points. He only had two real points, uh, so that's really bad. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that. I mean, he scored double digits six times in his last ten, including last night, so seven of nine coming in. Uh, just really, really poor outing. Didn't fill up any other stats only played 22 minutes because it was a blowout. This is just, just a terrible, terrible game for Avery Bradley. So that one hurt. Tony Allen, I think he was, what, 3,700 last night? Yeah, 3,700. So he ends up um, five times value, which I guess isn't terrible, but we expected much more than that. He they just he just never really got involved if you, if you watch that game at all. Uh, Powell and Mark, the two Gasol brothers, uh, Mark did his job and got... Five times value. I think he was 9,000, 9,300. So close to five times value, pal. Uh, this is just disappointing. I mean, when he scores eight points, you know, it's one of his worst games in, in a while. So uh, that was disappointing. He did pull down nine boards. He had six assists. He almost, I mean, he's really only a couple away from a double-double or a triple-double here. So um, only scoring eight points is actually pretty good that he scored that he scored 33 fantasy points. Uh, Derek Rose, uh, besides his 19 points, didn't do much else. So, uh, that's it. Not, not too much to say about that. Jared Dudley was pretty good cause he was 3,700 and he put up 23 points. And then John Wall, who unfortunately, uh, didn't even need to get it going. So let's look at the line score from last night, but this was never a game. Um, only took 13 shots. I mean, he made six of them. Didn't get to the free throw line, which stinks for us. Uh, just didn't need to do much. This game was in hand for for quite a long time. So disappointing there. I think our value plays were actually pretty good. So our four value plays were uh, Burke, Bradley, Allen, and Dudley. Four, uh, three of them. So everybody but Bradley basically hit value or exceeded value. Um, even though I thought Tony Allen would do better, that was that was okay that he got 18 points. It didn't kill us. Um, but Avery Avery Bradley only scoring nine fantasy points did hurt. So overall, the the value plays ended up being pretty good. It was the guys that we paid for that weren't. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, not going to happen too often when you when you take chalk and you take good players, and you can piece them together with value plays. So uh, I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. But tonight there is only um, I'm doing the six o'clock. Let's see here. It's the six o'clock tournament. Uh, six o'clock. Oh, NBA. So six o'clock. 
7 o'clock, sorry. So it starts at 7 o'clock, so that excludes one game today. So it's a five-game slate for us. And let's take a peek at it. Um, quickly with the with the odds, the only game I'm really avoiding is the Knicks Trailblazers. It's just a 12.5-point line, and it's the second lowest total of the day. So that's uh, two strikes against them in that game, which is you know not a lot of points are going to be scored uh, relative to the other games, and it has blowout potential. So that's uh, two strikes as far as avoiding this game altogether. Um, the rest of them are pretty good. The rest of them are close games or higher totals. Uh, biggest line of the day is LA and Phoenix. We know that Kobe is going to play tonight. Um, and the Lakers are five-point dogs. I expect a lot of points in that one as well, obviously. Uh, let's see what else we have going on. San Antonio, um, Tony Parker and Kawhi Leonard are both out. So keep that in mind. That could be that'll be a really good game. Houston at San Antonio. Kevin Durant is out as far as Oklahoma City goes. So it is again the Russell Westbrook show. Uh, yeah, that's basically the most notable stuff. Uh, a little shock at Cleveland's only a seven and a half point favorite at home tonight against Detroit, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that one plays out. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the 4:30 game. That's the game we're avoiding. That's the game we're avoiding. Okay, uh, so let's look at my projections for this evening. So here are here's the spreadsheet. Here's all of the projections, the um, points that they're going to need to justify their score. Corey Brewer scores very highly this evening. Um, this isn't a great sample size. It's only using the two games that he's played with Houston, which have been pretty good. But it's you know it's not terrible because those numbers were similar to what his um, what his normal output was for the rest of the season when he was in Minnesota, so not not terrible. Um, Steve Blake is a is a three thousand guy that scores very highly or projects highly tonight, as well as Grievous Vasquez, Reggie Jackson, Will, um, and Manu, especially with Tony Parker being out and the number of minutes that he's projected to play could be a pretty pretty solid player this evening um let's flip it and look at just highest outputs for this evening so uh bingo is the column that you want to look at here um russell westbrook 10 points higher than anybody else and is only one point off of his justification score which is 5.6 times his salary um He's a play that's going to be really tough to avoid tonight. James Harden, 4.7. I have him projected as far as value goes. Um, let's see who else we have here. Durant is actually out, so he should be cut. Lillard would be pretty good. Tim Duncan, pretty good. There's a lot of solid plays here. Carmelo, I'd avoid. His price tag is now inflated up to 10,500 and like we talked about that's potential blowout there's no way I can just I, I can't plug in Carmelo tonight so um, let's go through it position by position again like we did yesterday and there's really I mean with only five games there's a short list here uh, Russell Westbrook is to me clearly the best best player available if you made me choose um, who's going to score the most points fantasy points tonight I would go with Russell Westbrook Kevin Durant is out again um I do like Lowry, but with a small slate, I think paying the extra eighteen hundred would be worth it. Um, he's just been really Lowry's been really consistent lately. But again, you're going to need fifty points from him, and he's only done that once in his last ten. Um, I would have to avoid Lowry. Lillard is in that game that I don't really want to touch. Uh, Rondo, I'm still playing wait and see as far as how that offense is going to shake out. I don't think you can count on 21 points from him every single night. Um, so I would hang tight on Ty Loss, or I'm sorry, on Rajon Rondo. We know Tony Parker is out, which makes Corey Joseph an interesting play. So everyone, you know, Tony Parker's missed a lot of games this year, and everyone was on um, was on Corey Joseph when he was 3,000, and then his salary went up to like 6,000 because everybody was on him and he was playing really well. And it's kind of settled back down into this $5,000 range. And 
I really like it here because you need 25 or 30 fantasy points out of him, which when he plays the minutes, he gets. So uh, they played two nights ago, right? Yeah, today's the 28th. They played two nights ago, and he scores 32 fantasy points. I mean, he's filling it up. He's got 20, 20 real points. Uh, the game before that, he played 30 minutes, and he scored 29 fantasy points. I mean, you see, when it, it's a direct correlation of uh, minutes to fantasy points here. So when he plays, he hits value, um, and he's he's priced pretty well, especially with Tony Parker being out. So I really like Corey Joseph. Uh, Reggie Jackson would be fine considering uh, Kevin Durant is out. He projected well for me this evening as well. Um, I don't really trust it all that much just because Russell Westbrook takes over, but... Um, if you're if you're stuck there, Steve Blake was a guy who scored highly for me. Again, you only need 15 or if you got 15 points from him, that's um, that's five times value, and he's pretty pretty close to that every game. His upside is only like 25, so he's never he's not going to go nuts for you, but uh, he's probably not going to kill you either. So if you want to go really cheap at point guard, that's the way to do it. Um, let's pr- plug in Russell Westbrook because I know we I think we just got we got to play him tonight. All right, I. Uh, Let's see here. Okay. Uh, James Harden is another great play. I don't think we can fit him and Westbrook both in the same lineup. Uh, Eric Bledsoe gets the the matchup of the Lakers, so that's always good. Kobe, I'm not touching at all. First game back in three days. You missed the last three games. Um... I'm going further down the list here to see if there's any real good value plays. Not particularly. The guy that I think is really interesting is Manu. So with Tony Parker out, uh, Manu should get a couple extra minutes. He's been playing well lately. He's only 5,000. So we need uh, 25 or 30 points from him, which is pretty pretty good now what i like about him is he's safe to get you 20 but as you see his upside's like 40 and he's gone for 40 40 plus three times in the last 10 games so um i think he's a really solid play as far as he has a high high floor and a even higher ceiling and that's a tough combination to get in some guys and uh man who's one of them tonight so let's plug him in and, and see how this continues to pan out uh, at the small forward position, this is super, super uh, shallow tonight, in my opinion. I don't want Carmelo because he might not play the third quarter. Durant is out. Um, I- I'm still playing wait and see with Josh Smith. I, I think Houston's going to be in trouble if he takes 21 shots a game for them. Um just not really happy about that. Chandler Parsons is a, is a guy that I really liked beforehand. Uh, I'm sorry, before before the Rajon Rondo trade, essentially. But if you look, uh, here's the thir- here's the. I think the Rondo trade was the 19th. So these are the four games that Rondo has played with Parsons, and the first one was pretty good, 33 fantasy points, and then completely fell off. Um, not taking nearly as many shots. He was constantly taking double digit shots. He hasn't done that in the last three games. Um, I think their offense, the Mavericks offense is still trying to figure everything out. And Parsons is kind of, um, struggling to find his role or, or determine the usage of that, that he will have. But, uh, he is way too risky for me to touch tonight because he's going to need 35 fantasy points and, uh, his floor is way lower than that. And Kawhi Leonard's out. So already we're like, we've already chopped off the first five guys in the small forward position as I can't play them. <laughs> um, Nick Batum I like, but that's again that game I really don't want to touch. Now we're down six. Uh, Corey Brewer's interesting. Corey Brewer's had some decent games lately. Would only need, again, 25 or 30 points. Um, it's tough to say because he's only played a couple games with the Rockets. But I wouldn't mind rostering Corey Brewer because this position is so shallow tonight. Uh, yeah, there's really there's really no one to play. I mean, we'll plug we'll plug Corey Brewer in and not be happy about it. I think Tyson or I'm sorry, Trevor Ariza is actually pretty decent. 
if you look at this, the guy just plays a ton. Look at his minutes. Uh, the Portland game was a blowout. So he only played 32. But basically every other game he's playing 40 plus minutes. The guy just never comes off the court. And he's just a ton of opportunity for him. And he's pretty solid. So at a tough position, uh, Trevor Ariza would not worry me too much tonight. I, I, I'd play Brewer or Ariza. And that's really the only uh, the only places you can go there. It's small forward in my opinion. Okay, moving along. Uh Power forward, Aldridge, is he going to play tonight? I thought I heard. Yeah, he's doubtful for tonight. In a bad game. We said Duncan could be interesting. He needs uh, probably about 40 or 45 fantasy points to hit value. Um, I have him projected at 44. He would need about 48 to justify. Uh, that's pretty good, though. It's pretty good considering... Oops, wrong button there. Um, considering there's only five games on the slate, so Duncan is a is a nice play. Uh, we probably can't put him in this in this lineup right now because it'll he'll cost too much. Um, Dirk is always pretty good when he's had a day off. So they played two nights ago. Uh, I wouldn't mind rostering Dirk. Kenneth Farid had a monster night the other night, but I wouldn't expect that too often. See, his floor is 15 points and his ceiling is 61. That's too too much variance and too much risk for me. Amir Johnson scored highly for me this evening. Um, again, he's a little risky, but if he plays the minutes, if he plays 30 minutes, he'll, he should be fine. Let's plug in Amir Johnson just to kind of try to give us a little bit of relief and we'll get a little relief at the um at the center position as well. Okay, there's only uh two guys I'm considering tonight and it's Tyson Chandler who's a rebound machine. I just love this guy. You know, I, him and DeAndre Jordan, I've talked about him, I talk about him every single day are double digit um Double digit rebounds and raises their floor. Love them, love them, love them. Uh, but the guy that I want to plug in because he's only forty eight hundred is Alex Len, who is doing some serious work down in uh, down in Phoenix, and he gets a plus plus matchup tonight. So Len um, coming off a double double, he's playing over twenty minutes a game. He needs not even twenty five or thirty point fantasy points tonight. Probably less than that. And he's basically scored, he scored over 20 in the last six, um, and then 26, 29, and 34 in the last three. So really playing well, coming into his own. He's ripping a ton of boards. He's getting involved on the offensive end as well. And he gets the, I, I think this is the best matchup you can get. The, um, the center position against the Lakers, I'm pretty sure they give up the most points to anybody, than anybody in the league. So, um... Alex Len playing well lately, doesn't need a ton of points to hit value, and has a plus plus matchup. So that is certainly a guy I'm gonna plug in. So Len and Westbrook are basically the two staples in my lineup. I, if do you know you can do what you can do whatever you want. Obviously, it's your lineup, but um, those would be the two guys I would have to plug in and then fill in around them. Okay. Let's continue to roll here. Uh, we've got to fill up a guard position. And we spoke about uh, we spoke about Corey Joseph. Let's plug him in. Gives us a little more flexibility roster or salary wise. So Corey Joseph gets plugged in. Uh, now we've got 6,800. We could go, uh, could go Duncan, who I like, and then we could go. Patrick Patterson's been playing better lately. He's playing a lot of minutes. Let's check Patrick Patterson. So he's been playing. Um, Okay, 24, 30 minutes, 21 minutes. I mean, he's not starting, but he's coming off the bench and getting a, some decent run. 
and he's pretty consistent. I mean, look at these, look at this 10 game log as far as fantasy points go. Um, worst two games are 18 and a half and 19 points. If he scores you 19 points tonight, uh, you're not pleased, but every other game it's been in the 20s and a ceiling of like 35, 36. So he's not a bad play. If we plug Patrick Patterson in, we've got a pretty decent lineup here. Um, as I mentioned, Russell Westbrook and Len are the guys that I would fit into every single lineup and then just construct around them uh, with the other options that we played. So good luck tonight. We'll be in a $2 GPP and seven $1 heads up matches. Um, the final lineup will be posted on Twitter. It's at Rick run good. And um, I believe, yeah, it starts at seven o'clock Eastern. So good luck. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.